In this video, I will take you through the steps to create your own Blender automation script. You can use it to generate any number of variations and build a time-lapse style video from your save files. Surprisingly, you do not need to know Python to create a Python script in Blender. Blender will do most of the work for you. Let's start by setting up the Blender interface. Pull open a second window and set it to text. Then pull open a third window and set it to info. Click on new and enter a single line of text. This tells the Python interpreter that we want to work with Blender. Save it as a .py file. Now we'll just call it automation.py. And let's start by creating a skeleton program. We need to set the scene, set the camera, set the materials, or in this case, mat caps, and to do the render itself. Let's start by setting up the scene. We'll define a new method called set scene and we want to be able to set the render engine change the world color to black make the render shape square and set the render size to 25 percent now i don't know what these magic commands are so i'm going to let blender write them for me go to the render properties and select workbench from the render engine options you'll notice that in the info panel a command to set the render engine has appeared. Right click on it and copy and paste. You've written your first line of true Blender code. Add the line to call the method. Save your work. Change the render engine back to EV or cycles and then run your script and you'll instantly see it's changed it to Workbench. So let's quickly do the same for the other properties. We go to World, Viewport, Display and Color and set it to Black. The command pops up and we can copy and paste that. And then if we go to the Output Properties we can change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 and we can either change this line so that it reads Y because we want the X and the Y or we can cheat and just turn it up one and down one to get the uh, exact same results and we'll change the resolution percentage to be 25 because we don't need large images And if you notice, I've been tabbing in uh, these lines. Python is very particular about tabs. And we'll save that. Now our scene set up, we want to define a method to set up the camera. And again, we don't want to have to write anything. So let's get Blender to do the work. So if you go to view, a line view and a line camera to view. It'll set the camera exactly in the same place that uh, you had it. And then you can press G to grab and Z twice to move the camera on its normal axis until it's in the right place. And you can obviously make it nice and neat. Now we want the camera information. So you can click on the little arrow here or press N and make sure it's on item and we want to change the location up one and down one and you'll see that it's appeared in our info window and we can copy and paste it and just repeat that for the y and the z and as it only makes a tiny move you don't have to go back to get your exact values And again, making sure that you tab in when required. And then we need to do the same with the rotation. 
and I'm using shift to select multiple lines and then we can select all and tab in and then let's save it right so now let's test this by calling our set camera method and we'll just quickly move the camera around so something stupid like that and when we run the script it snaps back into place which is perfect and now we want to set up our matte caps or material captures set Cap. and if we go over to render properties and make sure you've selected matte cap because I think it defaults to, to studio and then click on the sphere and select a cool one like the UV you'll see we've got a whole new load of commands saved and we want the last two that are set it to mat cap mode and select the individual mat cap. And then we need to be a little bit sneaky because we need to change this. So instead of reading scene.shading, it's scene.display.shading for each of them, like so. And once again, we'll quickly test that by adding the call to set mat cap changing our matte cap to something else and uh, that's how you see the matte caps go to save that and when we run it it automatically sets it to what we want now we've set everything up the last thing to do is actually to render a file so we'll add our last method which is do render and unfortunately this one we can't get from Blender, but you'll have to just trust me that I know what I'm doing. So it's bpy ops.render.render and then we want to tell it that they are writing a still image, not an animation. And then of course we need to call our new method and one final thing is in the output properties we need to set a file name so let's just call it x for now save that and run it and you'll see the blender hasn't opened the normal render window but it has created that file if we switch to my image viewer and open x.png there it is Awesome, you can now load up any Blender file and your saved Python script and run it to get the same render results and output. And now we're gonna kick it into Overdrive and actually do some Python coding without Blender's help. But don't worry, I'll explain as I go along and you can download the final script from the links in the description. One of the main things we want to do is have multiple camera angles. So let's create a Python dictionary with the name can setups and we'll open this as an array. We will create a new dictionary object and set the first item to be named camera name and the value for the camera name will just be cam1. And we want another property and this one is going to be called location and location is its own array and we want the values from our camera so I'll just paste these in we'll do a similar thing for the rotation And then we want to repeat that for the three other camera views. And now we can tell 
Python to go through all our different cameras by just typing for cam in cam setup. And then we just want to call our set camera. Let's move that before that. And we want to pass in our new camera object. Now in our set camera definition, we can collect the setup object that we're receiving and remove all these hard-coded values. So to get at the item within the object we're sending, we just need to call on the dictionary name. So this will be location. And because we want the first item in this array, we can just use square brackets zero. And then we just need to repeat it for all of these. Now, if we run this script, it will set the scene, set camera one, set camera two, set camera three, set camera four, then set the materials, then do the render, which isn't quite what we want. So we can send the camera name to the do render function method and use that as the unique file name. So we're dealing with the cam object and the camera name property. So over to here and we know that that is the file name and then we just need to set the file name correctly. So change this and we get the code to do that. And then we can set up this as a format string and we want to say that when Python comes across this, it will set the file path to be the name that we're giving it, which is the file name. So now if we run this, it will create four files. So let's save that and run it. And sure enough, we can see as well as our original x.png, we've got camera one, camera two, camera three, and camera four. So let's move on to changing the materials. Right, so now let's do the same for our mat caps. This time it's just a, a standard array. We don't need to have any named dictionary items. We just want eight strings to hold our matcap names. So we know the first one. And then in the same way we tell Python to create a new material object from the matcap list that we have created. Oops. And we want to pass that to our set matcap method. And we will just call that material and change our hard-coded value here to material. And then we also need to send the same value to change the file name, otherwise we're gonna have a problem with the files being overwritten again. And what we need to do is put another format string in here and save that. And then we can just run that. And it'll take a few seconds, and there we go. It's done the last camera position with the last material. So let's go and check to see what files have been created. And here we can see all the different mat caps for all the different camera views and our original tests. 
Now we don't want to have to open up each Blender file separately and then find the script file and then run it every time to create all these files. In fact, we don't want to open up Blender at all, we just want these rendered images. You can run Blender from the command line. Here I'm using Linux terminal, but the premise is the same for Mac and Windows. We just run the Blender command with the background ground parameter and the blend file that we want to open up and then tell it that we also want it to run our Python script and Blender will happily open it up and create all those files and quit. And you'll notice that the command didn't open a, a new copy of Blender and it didn't matter that we had my current version of Blender running in the background, it still created all the files. Okay, so these next steps are not Blender and they are Linux specific, but you should be able to reproduce them in Windows and Mac. So to combine all the 32 images into a single image, I ran the montage command from Image Magic. The montage command just takes a list of images and we are specifying that we want to tile them in an 8x1 configuration. We just set the geometry to 0, 0 to indicate the uh, everything starts at the top left. And the name of the file we want the output to go into. and there is our first line and we can run that again and create the second and third and fourth line and then we combine them with another montage Cool. Selecting all the lines that we had before, and this time saying the tile is one by four. The geometry starts at the beginning. Don't know if we actually need that, but uh, seems to work well. And we'll call it frame one dot png and when we view frame1.png it is all four lines combined from the 32 images and then when you've got a frame for each of your save files you can combine them with ffmpeg uh, you can see much more detail and all the scripts that I use to automate these steps at the github link in the description below including a link to my free human skull mesh